Okay, hello. Um, this is an additional example problem that I'm going to provide for you on how to calculate support reactions for a simply supported beam. Okay, so here for our example, we have a simply supported beam with a 20 pound external load that's acting at the mid span of this beam. Uh, the beam span is 20 feet in length. Um, and we have two support reactions. This is considered a pin connection, which pin connections uh, resist forces in both the vertical and horizontal directions. And we're going to label this one particular support, uh, support A. And then over here we have a roller connection. This roller connection only resists forces in the vertical connection, and we're going to call this uh, support uh, B. Uh, the reason why there is a pin and a roller connection is because um, with beams, and particularly on bridges, um, for instance, you would not want to support uh, reaction in both the X and the Y on both sides of this beam um, for all of the members or all the beams across the bridge because due to expansion and contraction, the bridge would actually pull itself apart. So um, the beams actually have no resistant force on one side. Um, they don't particularly look like this, so to speak, but they do have bridge bearings, which are usually some sort of a plate that these beams slide along to allow for that expansion and contraction so it doesn't pull itself apart. And, okay, in any case, to go, any, to go further, let's um, solve for these support reactions. Um, RBA, reaction RB, RB in the Y direction, and the reaction RA in the Y direction, and the reaction RAX direction. Okay, so here's our simply supported beam. And the first thing we want to do is draw our free body diagram. Like I had just discussed, we're going to have an RAY uh, acting in the vertical direction, acting up. Um, we're also going to have an RAX resisting a horizontal force, um, which we're going to assume to be acting uh, towards the right in the positive direction, just like an X, just like an axis where um, right would be positive, the left would be negative along the x-axis. Same thing goes with the y-axis. All forces acting down would be act, would be a negative, assumed a negative value, and all forces acting up would have a positive value on it because you have to sum these forces algebraically. That's what's going to happen in a few moments. Okay, so we have an RAY and an RAX at support reaction A, and we also have a support reaction RBY happening at support B. Great. Next thing we want to do is use one of our three equilibrium equations. This uh, equation is what they call sum of the moments uh, is equal to zero. Um, but that moment be can be taken anywhere along this beam. Um, particularly though, when you're working with simply supported beam and trying to calculate a support reaction, you generally want to pick e either one of these reactions. In this particular instance, I pick reaction A right here. Um, the reason why you want to sum at one of these reactions is because a moment, or the definition of a moment, if you haven't already looked at the PowerPoint, is a force multiplied by its perpendicular distance to the line of action of the point at which you're summing that moment about. So if we're summing a moment about A, um, and we're going to set them all equal to zero, RAY and RAX here and here, um, since we're summing at that point, they don't have any perpendicular distance to the line of action at zero. So these both would cancel out. That's why I picked this point. It was a convenient point to pick. Okay, so if I sum the moments about point A and I set it equal to zero, I would say I have a 20 pound force, right? Again, this is negative like we discussed before because so it's acting down. So I put a negative 20 pound force acting at a distance of 10 feet from point A, right? So that would be 10 feet from the perpendicular distance to the line of action of that force. And there's my 10 feet. And then I want to. I said the sum of the moments of A, right? So that's the sum of the moment of this 20 pound force acting on A, but I have another force, right? I have this vertical reaction force resisting that um, that's occurring at point B. So I'm going to put here a positive, right? Because it's acting up. So I'm going to have a positive RBY acting up here, and I'm going to multiply it by its perpendicular distance from point A to the line of action of that force, which is 10 plus 10, which is 20 feet, right? So I'm going to multiply RBY by 20 feet, and then doing simple algebra, right? And Combining the terms, I'm going to get RBY times 20 feet is equal to 200 pound foot, right? I took this and I combined them and I brought it to the other side of the equation, and then I solved um, using simple algebra divided by 20 and solved for RBY, and RBY winds up being 10 pounds. Okay, so now we have RBY. Next, we want to use 
um, I already stated earlier, we had three equilibrium equations, so we want to use the other two equilibrium equations. And the other two equilibrium equations are the sum of the forces of x is equal to zero, and the sum of the forces of y is equal to zero. So we'll do the sum of the forces of x equals zero first. As you notice, the only force we have in the x is Rax. So I set my equation, sum of the forces of x equals zero, Rax equals zero pounds. That makes sense because there is no horizontal uh, force acting upon this beam. Um, so we say Rax is zero pounds. Next, we're going to do the sum of the forces of y is equal to zero, right? I have a y here, 20 pound force acting down. I have an Ry acting up here. Um, of an unknown value at this point, and I have an RBY acting up here, which we had just solved for right on the previous slide. And we had found when we summed the moments, we found them to be 10 pounds. So I say the sum of the forces of y is equal to zero, and I combine my terms 20 pounds down, that's a negative value, and then I have RBY, which is equal to 10 pounds, right? I substitute in that 10 pounds right here, and I say that's a positive RBY acting up. And I also have my positive RAY acting up. And that's my only real unknown, right? Because once I substitute in for this RBY, I combine my terms, and I have negative 20 plus 10 is negative 10, and I bring negative 10 to the inside of the equation using simple algebra, and RAY is equal to 10 pounds. Okay, so I've solved for RAX. I solved for RAY here using the sum of the forces X and Y. On the prior side, I had solved for RBY already, so I've solved for all three of my support reactions. And the only thing left to do is to create a force diagram for the calculated support reactions, right? Uh, and here they are, 0 pounds, 10 pounds, and 10 pounds. That's interesting, RAY and RBY are the same. Well, I would hope they would be because this 20-pound force was acting right in the center of the beam, so I would think it would have taken a 20-pound force and split them evenly. If I had taken a 20-pound force, though, and I had moved it slightly to the right a certain distance, um, what would happen is, is that these would no longer be equal, right? In fact, if I slid it towards the right, this value would get larger. In fact, I can slide it to a point where RBY would equal 12 pounds. I'm not particularly sure what that distance is, but we could have done some math to do it, but it's not worth the time. Um, the only thing I do want to explain to you, um, which would make more sense of the equilibrium, is that when this is 12 pounds here, right, and that 20 pound force is shifted somewhat to the right, this RAY would have to equal 10 pounds, 8 pounds, excuse me, because 12 plus 8 is equal to 20, and the only external force acting down is 20 pounds, so this has to be a combination of 20 pounds acting up to resist that force, hence its equilibrium. If they didn't equal each other, that would be a problem, because that means that the beam is moving, and if that beam is moving, it's falling down, right? So whether it's a bridge, or it's a roof, or a floor deck, that's, that's a big problem, all right? So, uh, well, that's my conclusion for equilibrium, and how to calculate moments and basically how to determine support reactions. You know, once we have these, in conclusion, once we have these forces now, we could use these forces to start solving for these connections um, to whatever these other members are going to be here, whether it's going to be a column or whether it's going to be another beam and whether it's going to be bolted or welded. Um, these are the forces of which they would have to resist. Um, there's a little more to problems in this nature, but um, this is the basics and you need to do this uh, anytime you're doing a uh, structural analysis of the beam. Okay, thank you for your time.